Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in. Today we are going to look at how to loop animations inside of Cinema 4D. On the surface it's pretty easy but it can get quite complicated pretty quick. So let's dive in and see how it works. Okay so looping animations. So let's say we have a clock and we want this minute hand here to do a 360 rotation once and then continue on after that. Okay, so um, the first thing we need to do is let's set a keyframe. So we're gonna select, I have a null object here that is attached uh, to the hand that we will use for the animation. So let's go ahead and go here and let's set our first keyframe at frame one. There we go. And then let's lay our second keyframe at frame 60. And this will be a full, uh, let's do, I think it needs to be negative 360 rotation. Okay, so now if we play back, we should get a full 360 rotation. Now, of course, we could come here and we could just manually copy these keyframes a thousand times to, a, to for however long that we needed um, for the sequence to be. But there's actually a much easier way to do it, which is what I'm about to show you. Um, so if you come here and you select your animation track, you'll see that under your properties window over here, you get some options. You have before and after. And what that means, it means what happens, what is the animation doing before these keyframes and after these keyframes? So currently it's just saying constant. So that means it's gonna stay to whatever that value is that it began and left on. So right now we have a value of um, negative 360. And at the beginning we have a value of zero pretty simple. So this is going to stay at zero. This, this line right here is representing that value. And then this is going to stay at negative 360. So really, essentially, nothing happens before and after. Um, so what if we do want something to happen before and after? Well, what we can do is we can actually set it. We have other options um, where we can set it to, to do things either before or after. In our case, we want after because uh, we're starting at frame one. So let's select after, and right now it's on constant, and let's go to repeat. Okay, so as soon as we hit repeat, you can see that we're given this, this additional uh, F curve that's happening here. Let's switch to this view. So it's repeating that curve exactly one time. So let's see what happens. Okay, and then it stops. Okay, so why did it stop? It stopped because we're only telling it to repeat one time. So over here in the properties window, um, you have the option to tell how many times to repeat. So let's do three times. Okay, so now it's one, two, three times extra. So if we go through, it's gonna go three times extra. That's great. But what if all of a sudden, um, you know, what if we don't know how long our scene is? What if we, what if this scene might get extended another 300 frames, but we won't know that, and I don't want to keep animating this. Um, well, in this situation, for the animation that we have right now, there's actually one other option that we can do, and that is setting it to continue. Now, what continue does is it continues the speed at which the last keyframe was left at. Now, it might sound strange, so um, I'm going to show you what that means. So if we click continue, watch what's going to happen over here with these lines. Okay, it goes back to, to flat. But why is it doing that? It's doing that because it's continuing the speed at which it left off at. So right now, we are working in a nonlinear, um, with nonlinear keyframes here. So the speed is ramping down to zero. So we're starting at zero speed and we're ramping down to zero speed again. We're going up and then back down. So it's going to continue that speed, which currently is zero. Now, if we set this keyframe to a linear keyframe, you'll see that what it tries to do is it tries to continue that speed in a linear direction throughout. So if we come over here and we line that up, Now we actually get it going on to infinity again. And what's cool about this, I mean, in this situation, honestly, we can just put everything to linear because, I mean, clocks are linear. They're not going to ease in and ease out, at least in the real world, maybe in, you know, a stylized piece or something that might do otherwise. Uh, so let me go back to here so we can see it. So this is just going to go on forever. I mean, it's literally going to go on until your eyes bleed. Um, 
So that's cool. That's great. That works good. Where it where it fails again is if you have if you have like uh, keyframes that are easing really hard in and hard out. You know, you're going to start seeing those uh, different uh, differences in it. So that's probably the easiest way I would say to uh, to create a loop. Um, now, of course, I've set myself up with a nice scenario here of just a rotating from zero to three sixty uh, situation. But what if we had something that was a little different? So what if we have like position keyframes? So let's see what happens with that. So let's just switch out uh, to an alternate view here. And let's go to my cube. And we're just going to go to frame one, set a keyframe just for X. Uh, it's going to give us our position here. And then let's go to frame 50. And let's just move it over a bit. And we are going to set another keyframe. And so now it's going back and forth. But let's say we want this to repeat. Okay, so the obvious choice would be what we just talked about, which was, okay, well, let's let's just hit the repeat button. So let's come over here. And side note, you can also find this under functions, uh, track before and after. I tend to not use this just because the can uh, I don't have this main controls this way. So I usually use the, uh, the property manager over here. Um, so let's go and select our track and let's set it to repeat. And let's have it repeat three times. And you'll see that it's going to repeat three times. But in this situation, it's not doing a perfect loop how the circle was. So it's going to pop back, pop, pop, pop. So that's not going to work. Um, all right. So what we could do is we could come over here and we could just copy that keyframe. That also works. We can copy the keyframe. And now it's going to do it because the first and the last keyframe are exactly the same. But let's say that we didn't want to do that. Let's say that we wanted to not have to copy that last keyframe. All right, so another option we have is to come over uh, to our track again, and let's go to our properties, and let's do an offset repeat. Now what the offset repeat is gonna do is it's gonna take, it's gonna take our first keyframe, and it's gonna try to match to match it exactly with the last keyframe. So it's a little strange to explain, but you'll see what I mean. Um, so if you come over here and we go to offset repeat, now what it's doing is it's just, it's matching, it's matching this last, this first keyframe to the last keyframe. So it's, it's, it's saying, hey, wherever this one ends, put the first one there. But what that's giving us is a stair-stepping effect. So you're gonna see what's gonna happen is over time, it's gonna just keep moving in one direction over there, which is, I don't know. Maybe maybe you could use it. I don't know when I would use it. Um, but I just want to show you guys this stuff so you have an idea of the possibilities that there is. Because I guess that is kind of cool. You know, it's kind of doing its thing if you were to maybe come over here and like stair step it. That's kind of cool, I guess. Um, yeah, all right. So that's one option. So you can do that and you get kind of stair steppy effect. It's compounding on each other. Um, the next option would be we can come back here we can select our track again, and then we can go to oscillate. So oscillate basically is going to force it to stay in the position. It's not going to do the stair stepping. So it's essentially what we just talked about where it's going to take the first and match it to the last, but force it to stay in the position. So now we're going to get that smooth back and forth motion that we were trying to get without actually having to copy this, this other keyframe, um, which is great because, uh, it's less mistakes, less opportunity for mistakes. So that's it, guys. Uh, thanks again for watching. Um, and if you like this, please subscribe. And I will see you on the next one.